So today's video is all about replacing the float valve in an old toilet system. And I've got some useful points about high and low pressure float valves and the difference between part one and part two valves. And for those of you wondering why I'm not replacing the entire ball float valve system with one of the new bottom entry brass shank fill valves, that's coming up in the video as well. And apologies before we start for the avocado green 1970s toilet that features in this video and secondly for the state of the room that it's in this is one of the last two rooms upstairs in the cottage that I haven't started renovating yet and there will be videos on that project at some point in the future. So in today's toolkit we've got a 10 inch 250 millimeter adjustable wrench, we've got a pair of slip joint pliers, we've got a half inch part two float valve which is a high pressure float valve and finally we've got a new ball float to go on the valve. Details of all today's tools will be in the description at the end of the video. Okay, so welcome to my ancient 1970s Armitage Shanks toilet with this siphonic flush valve, which I've had to repair the diaphragm in a couple of times. But this part one bottom entry float valve has basically failed. I have repaired this with a set of washers previously, but it's gone again. Water's up to the overflow and dripping outside the house. Now, a lot of you will be thinking, with some good reason, why didn't you simply rip out the entire existing bottom entry flow valve system and replace it with one of the more modern bottom entry brass shank fill valves, of which there are some good examples on, for example, Screwfix and Toolstation, with almost unanimously good reviews. Well, the reason I didn't do this is because my existing inlet shank is in pretty good nick. I didn't want to fiddle with the seal between the inlet shank itself and the bottom of the system which I have had some problems with in the past. Bottom line, I decided it would be less hassle simply connecting the new part two valve to the existing shank rather than taking out the whole unit. But I've got to say I've got a pretty nasty plastic flow valve that I've had a lot of problems with in the past in another toilet where the plastic plunger lever failed so I had to replace it with a bolt which is now rusting. So it is tempting to replace this with one of these modern fill valves and I might be doing a video on that at some point in the future. So I was going to go online and buy another flow valve but found this in my store. I must have bought this a few years ago when I replaced the flow valve in the water tank in the roof. This is a part two float valve. I bought it from Screwfix and it is Pegler. They're all much for muchness but it's good to go with a trusted brand like Pegler. They don't sell these particular valves on Screwfix anymore but it's this one here. Uh, to be honest with you, when you're looking at sort of eight quid, including VAT, to replace one of these, you might as well just replace the whole thing rather than getting a washer kit. And there are quite a few inexpensive float valves on, for example, Screwfix and Toolstation that have had pretty decent reviews. You just want to make sure the one you buy has a British Standard 1212 Part 2 compliance stamp on it, which most of the ones I've seen online seem to. But this is not the original water spout, so whilst the float valve itself is new, this bit isn't because I stupidly dropped the float valve snapping the water outlet pipe. So the water outlet pipe you see in today's video is from the old part two float valve from the loft water tank. Anyway, it'll do the job. Now, before we get into the repair itself, just a quick chat about two things, difference between high pressure and low pressure float valves, and also difference between part one and part two float valves, as this comes up quite a lot in the comments section of my previous video. A lot of people ask me whether they need a high or a low pressure float valve. Most if not all float valves these days are supplied high pressure as standard because most tanks or cisterns are fed from the incoming mains water supply which is high pressure. The only situation where you're likely to have low pressure is for example if your water, if your toilet cistern is fed by the water tank in the loft. The second point is the difference between part one and part two float valves. On part one float valves, the water outlet is on the underside of the float valve, whereas on part two float valves, the water outlet is on the top of the float valve. Part two float valves are preferred in the industry because it's all about backflow prevention. If a part one float valve fails, the water level in the cistern or water tank is likely to rise above the float valve water outlet, as you can clearly see it's done here in my system. And if for whatever reason there's a failure in the mains water supply pressure, and so there's a negative pressure, that could suck water from the system or the tank into the mains, and that is against water regulations. The second point why part one float valves are not recommended is that to alter the height of the water in the system or the water tank, you've basically got to bend the float arm. Whereas part two float valves, as you'll see in today's video, have a very neat little wing nut or washer on the side of the ball float so that you can raise or lower it on the float arm. 
So if you've got a part one valve that's failed, you should always try and replace it with a part two valve. The first job is to isolate the water. I put this valve on a few years ago when I was replacing the siphonic flush because it didn't have one before. It's a really good idea to fit isolator valves onto all of your toilets like this because then it just means it's so much easier to get on with any repairs. Okay, we know the water's off now. And so it's on with the repair. Now this is a side entry float valve, meaning these rather nice brass, most of them are plastic now, spigoted back nut and flange back nut are designed to be clamped against the side of your water tank or toilet cistern. But what I'm hoping to do, although my valve is a bottom entry float valve, it's sort of designed in the same way as a side entry valve. So I'm hoping to dispense with the inlet shank entirely and simply screw the body of the new part two float valve onto the coupling nut of the existing shank. I hope I can get a decent angle without my hands being too much in the shop. But but it really wasn't very difficult. I can probably do that by hand now. Now it's on with the new one. I'm just going to move that slightly out of the way so I can tighten it up. What I like about this valve is it's the design is actually really clever because it's quite versatile in terms of fitting the float in. Now, I don't know at this point exactly what height the float needs to be, but I'm gonna just put it in a approximate position. I'm gonna go with my smaller adjustable spanner now to do this tight. too tight at this point. And now on with the water, let's see how it performs. You have to do a bit of fiddling around with these because if you don't allow enough water, particularly with these older toilets with these siphonic flush valves, if you don't need even enough water in the system, you don't get a proper flush. So I really want that to be finishing off pretty close to where it is now. Notice how quiet it is. This is a noticeable upgrade for this old toilet because with this old part one valve it used to thrash away for hours. But now all that water's drained in with scarcely a sound and it's just now petering out. So that's it, job done. And kind of left myself with about an inch, 25 mil of water below the pipe. Quick check to make sure we're flushing properly. Yep, got ourselves a nice full flush. So that's it for today's video. I really hope you found it useful. Perhaps the most interesting thing for me about replacing the part one with the part two float valve was just how much quieter the toilet flush was. So it was a welcome upgrade as well as stopping that annoying dripping overflow pipe outside the house.
All the tools detailed in today's video will be in the description at the end of the video, which you can access by clicking on the arrow on your smartphone or on the show more button on your PC. Stay tuned next week when I will be featuring more projects in this bedroom. And as I always say, if you're new to my channel, I would absolutely love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here. See you soon.